Okay, guys, in this chapter, we're going to talk about exponential and log functions. So let's start with exponential functions. Let's uh, review some algebra of exponential functions. First of all, let's define an exponential function. Uh, if a is a positive number but not equal to 1, then the exponential function with base, base a is given as f of x equals a to the x. And so a can be any number that's positive but not equal to 1. And the domain, the x values, are actually all real numbers. So the x values can be any number from minus infinity to infinity. And we'll also find out that the range is all positive real numbers for these types of functions. So some examples of exponential functions would be 2 to the x, where the base is 2, 2 thirds to the x, base of 2 thirds, or you can have an irrational number like pi or square root of 2 as the base, so you could have pi to the x. You could obviously have a decimal for the base, so you could have 0.2 to the x. Okay, well, these exponential um, functions satisfy certain properties, but before we get into that, let's remind you about your exponential your exponent properties. These should, you should already know. Um, a to the 0 is 1. Now that's of course if a does not equal 0 because 0 to the 0 is indeterminate. But a to the 0 is 1 so if you have some number to the 0 power other than 0 it's going to equal 1. a to the x times a to the y is a to the x plus y. So if you have 5 to the 3rd power times 5 to the 4th power that would be the same as 5 to the 7th power. You just add exponents. If you have a quotient like a to the x divided by a to the y, then that's equal to a to the x minus y. So if you had 2 to the 7th divided by 2 cubed, that would be 2 to the 7 minus 3, which is 2 to the 4th. And then a to the x raised to the y is equal to a to the x times y. So if you had 2 to the 3rd and then you raise that to the 5th, that would equal 2 to the product of 3 and 5. 2 to the 15th power. And then here if you have two factors raised to the x power, that's the same as the product of each factor raised to the x power. So let's say you had 2 times x to the 4th, and this whole thing was raised to the 3rd power. Well, that would be the same as 2 to the 3rd power times x to the 4th to the 3rd power. And then 2 to the 3rd power is 8 and then x to the 4th to the 3rd power is x to the 12th, so you get 8x to the 12th. And then the same thing if you have a quotient raised to the x power, it's equal to the quotient of the two numbers raised to the x power. So if you have 3 over x cubed raised to the 4th, that's the same as 3 to the 4th over x cubed to the 4th, and 3 to the 4th is 81, and x cubed to the 4th is x to the 12th. And then finally, if you have a negative exponent, a to the negative x is 1 over a to the positive x. So if you had 5 to the negative 3, that would be 1 over 5 to the positive 3, or 1, 25th, 1 over 1 25th. Another thing you might uh, think of is if you had like 1 over something to a negative power, like if you had 1 over 2 to the negative 3, that would actually be the same as 2 to the positive 3. So that's an, it, it's just another way that property would work, which would give you, of course, 8. So anyway, that's, the, that's your exponent properties. Now let's talk about properties of exponential functions. We'll graph some of these in a minute, but basically for exponential functions, um, I want to show you two different exponential functions here. And uh, let's see, um, here's one, and notice for this function, the base a is going to be a number less than 1. Now remember the base always has to be greater than 0. So here you have a base less than 1 and over here you have an a uh, base greater than 1. That should say greater than 1 not 0. So over here you have a base greater than 1. Okay so what I'm saying is is this could be something like let me just give you an example. It could be something like y equals one half to the x. So that way your your base would be a number one half which is less than one. 
And then over here, your base could be something like 2 to the x. So here your base would be greater than 1, because 2 is greater than 1. Okay, well, for most of, most of the properties, regardless of which, what you have for the base, are the same. So there's just a, one property that really changes. For both of these functions, regardless of the base, the domain is all real numbers. And then the range is all positive real numbers. So notice that you can go as far as you want on the x-axis either direction. So the graph goes as far as you want on the x-axis either direction. But notice that the graph never touches the y-axis. I mean, the, I'm sorry I said that wrong. The graph never touches the x-axis. So as far as the range, the range starts at zero, but then goes up as high as you want it. So for both of these, the range starts at zero, but goes up as high as you want it. So it starts, when I say start at zero, I don't mean it can equal zero. I mean any number greater than zero for the range. So the range goes from zero to infinity. Now, if you let x be zero in either one of these cases, the y value would be one. So the y-intercept of these graphs is always going to be 0, 1. And you can see here, there's the y-intercept. And you can see here, there's the y-intercept. And notice that the graph never touches the x-axis, so it, there is no x-intercept. Actually, the x-axis turns out to be a horizontal asymptote. And then I've already told you part E. Uh, f is an increasing function if a is greater than 1, but it's a decreasing function if a is less than 1. And then both of these functions are one-to-one -one functions, so therefore they have inverses. Okay, let's look at graphing these. Okay, so to graph, let's say you wanted to graph one with a base greater than 1, like 2 to the x. Okay, so to graph 2 to the x, basically you would you could plug in numbers like negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And those are the numbers I generally plug in, but you could plug in other numbers as well. But basically, if you plug in negative 2, you get 2 to the negative 2, which is 1 fourth. So 2 to the negative 2 is 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 fourth. And then if you plug in negative 1, you get 2 to the negative 1, which is 1 half. Now, the rest of them you shouldn't have a problem figuring out without me having to show you. If you plug 0 in, 2 to the 0 gives you 1. And if you plug 1 in, 2 to the 1st gives you 2. And then uh, if you plug 2 in, 2 squared gives you 4. So if you plot these points, you'll see down here, here's the point negative 2, 1 fourth. And here's the point negative 1, 1 half. And here's the point 0, 1. And here's the point 1, 2, and then here's the point 2, 4. So you'll notice this function, actually the rate of increase actually increases as you go farther out on the x-axis. Now, on this other function, I'm going to do a base between 0 and 1, like 1 fourth. Well, if you plug negative 2 in, you're actually going to get 1 fourth to the negative 2 power, which actually is the same as the reciprocal of 1 fourth to the positive 2 power. So that would be 4 squared, which is um, 16. Okay? Now, if you plug negative 1 in, you're going to get 1 fourth to the negative 1. But 1 fourth to the negative 1 is just the reciprocal of 1 fourth, which is 4. And then, of course, if you plug 0 in, 1 fourth to the 0 is 1. If you plug 1 in, 1 fourth to the first power is a fourth. And then if you plug 2 in, 1 fourth to the second power is actually 1 sixteenth. Now, the first ordered pair is off of the graph, so let's just start with the second one. Um, the point negative 1 4 is right here. The point 0 1 is down here. The point 1 1 fourth is down here. And then if you wanted to get the point 2, 1 16th, you'd have to go way over here somewhere and plot a point, you know, down here somewhere. But anyway, now you can see kind of the shape of the graph from that. Uh, you can transform functions like 2 to the x just like you could other functions. Like right here, if you wanted to graph 2 to the x plus 5 minus 2, its base function would be the function 2 to the x. 
and then to get this function, since you're replacing x with x plus 5, you would take this function, shift it left 5 units, and then minus 2 tells you to shift it down 2 units. For this function, your base function would be 1 fourth to the x, so you would take that 1 fourth to the x I just showed you, and then when you um, replace x with negative x, it's going to reflect it about the y-axis, and then this minus here is going to reflect it about the x-axis, and then the plus 5 shifts it up 5 units. Now here, you have 5 times 2 to the x. Now don't make the mistake of saying that's 10 to the x, because you can't multiply the 5 and the 2 together, okay, because the 2 is raised to a power. But what you can do is you can stretch this function by a factor of 5. So instead of, remember a while ago when I said if x is 0, y is 1? Well, for this function, if x is 0, y would be 5. And remember this function when x is 2, y would be 4. Well, for this function when x is 2, y would be 5 times 4, which is 20. So basically, it's, it's going to give you a factor of 5. So, so anyway, I mean, it's going to stretch it by a factor of 5. Okay, we're going to finish this up and then do another video on some applications, but we'll finish up with base E. E is a number that is approximately um, 2.71828. So to five decimals, E is approximately 2.71828. Now, you can get, a, you, if you need to approximate E, out that far, fine, but here's some other approximations, but 2.7, 2.71, 2.718, and so forth. But actually, the exact value of E, it's kind of like saying the exact value of pi. The exact value of pi is not 3.14, it's, you know, that just pi. Well, the exact value of E is just E. And E actually comes from a limit, but you don't have to worry about that. I'm not, we're not going to actually have to show you where that comes from in this course, but either one of these two limits would give you e and what you could do like for instance on this one if you graph this function and then if you took this function and you let x get closer and closer to zero on the graph you'd actually see that this this actually gets closer and closer to this number 2.71828 so that's that's basically where e comes from now to graph e you can take your calculator and there should be an e to the x function on your calculator and you can say e to the negative 2 and that'll be 1 over e squared which is 0.14 e to the negative 1 is 1 over e which is 0.37 e to the 0 is 1 e to the first is just e which is approximately 2.7 e squared is 2 which is approximately 7.4 so if I graph that at negative 2 I get a very small number at negative 1, I get a number about a third of the way to 1. And then at 0, I get 1. At 1, I get a number between 2 and 3, 2.7. And then at 2, it's going to be, you know, way up here somewhere. But that's basically what it looks like. Now, I want to wrap this up. I want to show you two types of growth models that involve exponentials. One is the exponential growth model. Now, the exponential growth model actually grows without bounds so it can go as high as you want it if you let x get large enough now that's because in this case the base is e and so e is a number greater than one so it's going to increase without bound but the logistic growth model it starts out increasing without bound but then it levels off okay and so these have uh, particular applications. The first one is for population growth that's not bounded or it could also be for money that grows without bound. Uh, the second one you could think of it as where a population is growing unbounded until it reaches a certain uh, value and then it starts to level off. So in other words the logistic growth model has an upper bound and it can't go higher than that upper bound. Uh, you can read my note down here if you need to freeze the video and stop for a minute and just read my note about these two types of growth models that involve exponentials. And that's the end of this video and on the next video uh, I'll show you a couple of examples that use uh, models like this.